That's the 30 SMA. The singular. <laughs> hey, uh, we'll catch up our uh, coaching session. We'll add one to the end of the program. I'm just going to go through the reports tonight. I got to get ready for tomorrow. Uh, so, good evening, guys. Ken Tortoise Capital Nightly Strategy Podcast for October, or no, November 12th, 2024. Uh, we'll do some sniper trades of the day. Uh, this one is in Alcoa. Let's, uh, zoom in a little bit on him. All right, so that's your uh, OR3. With uh, yesterday's close, uh, the gap open, sells off, returns to here. So I just put my little bracket, my opening range 10 bracket, or opening range 3 bracket on that one. The big gap is what makes me want to do the OR3. It breaks down. It, that actually would have been the OR10 entry as well. Uh, standard risk box. It's moving out nicely. And uh, I just take the uh, the piece our cross. The whole market was was weak here, so I waited for the. Uh, sorry, that's. It got distorted a little bit there. There's my stop. And uh, that's the Kata 2 re-entry to the downside. It gets a fraction. It's now late in the day. It's the afternoon. That's the maximum adverse excursion from the VWAP. So I put the standard risk box on there. Now, technically, could I have used a smaller box? Yeah. I mean, if you're looking strictly at the PSAR, you know, you could argue that um, that you could get away with this on a technical basis. But I'm accustomed to trading a box of this size with Alcoa, and I like the way that that feels, and uh, so I don't have to overthink it. So I just play it with standard bet size. But if this were to break below, um, is not that working? Come on. Pen's not working. All right, if that were to break below uh, this line right here, then I would resume that move. So I would take the half an hour loss and then just resume to the downside. So it starts moving out. And I take the uh, right around three o'clock, it pulls back and tests the uh, the PSAR crosses the VWAP. It felt like it was coming back to the Bollinger Band mean, so I take a half an hour gain on that. So the net on that one was pretty good. That was a very relaxed, uh, very relaxed trade uh, for about uh, about four hour net. Uh, the rest of the day just kind of went sideways and ended up, as usual, uh, vicinity, the VWAP. Um, here's one on uh, SPY, also three minutes. Uh, that's like that's an OR3, essentially. Uh, a quick no lose plus dinner for two, then a re entry on a collapsing dragon. Uh, about half an hour on a PSAR exit. 
I thought hard about exiting here, but before I could pull the trigger, uh, it resumed a downside move. So kind of lucked into a little gain there. Uh, I thought about re-entering short at the yellow dot, waited for the red dot to break the, uh, the next collapsing dragon. Um, So we get about an R on that that collapsing dragon uh, that creates an SSC. This is that standard pattern that we've been looking at for the last couple of weeks, the uh, VWAP magnet. And it's special because this is an SPY. So in the afternoon, after lunch, you get this maximum adverse excursion uh, from the VWAP. And then you get a SSC entry. There's your risk box to the bottom of the PSAR. Um, your initial target is that yellow dot at the VWAP. But that thing never really looked back. It cruised right through it, starting to stall. When this rolls over right here, and we're close to 3 p.m., uh, I just take the, I take the uh, PSAR exit. There was actually, you know, if you're as quick as Jay, you might have been able to trade that and you might get the second leg. But to me, that was that was such a good trade. I was content with that. Uh, there were a couple other things that I was observing that I didn't have uh, time to trade, but just uh, today was was still a pretty good day for things like um, this is. This is NVIDIA. Uh, I didn't trade this one. But the OR3 probably would have supported you in a trade to here. Um, the collapse below the VWAP might have offered this. There's a Kata 2 in here somewhere. So there was a little bit of technical potential in NVIDIA. Um, marijuana we talked about yesterday. It's been slaughtered the previous three days. It's gone from you know, nine down to four. So losing more than half its value in a hurry. Uh, and then today uh, was a recovery. So there was an initial, like an OR3 move in here. And then you get this chop. And then I don't know what the news event was, but when you see a jump in the VWAP like that, this move was on enormous volume. So if you've got some kind of trigger, uh, when if you're in this sideways quiet channel, and then you see this kind of move in your MACD four seasons. Uh, it's possible to get an entry in here somewhere, and then you might get the second leg. But if this thing closed so well, and it closed above the VWAP, i.e., this little return to the VWAP did not happen. When I see that, that kind of uh, uh, divergence between the closing price and the VWAP, that suggests to me that there was people buying this with the intention and the expectation that it's going to go up tomorrow. So I would be ready to, uh, to get into uh, MSOS if it clears 480 tomorrow. And we talked yesterday about this really just being kind of like a poor man's option play on the entire medical marijuana sector. So that kind of paid off uh, today it was up 15 or 16 percent net. Um, the afternoon in Palantir, uh, I took some, uh, I took some money off the table in this area when it didn't look like it was, it had a couple chances to make some runs. It didn't. Uh, so I took some money off the table here. Uh, there was an opportunity trade on the VWAP magnet and a follow through. And this is another one of those where I I'll be ready for this to continue north of 60. If it gets north of 60, I'm going to have a long bias. So the money that I cashed out of here, uh, I'm I think I'm ready to put that back to work tomorrow in Palantir. Didn't did not trade this piece, but I'm noticing that about our story stock. Um, the last one was, um, yeah, this was the out. I'm sorry, yeah, this is the that was yesterday's marijuana trade, by the way. 
the collapse from 480 it ran all the way down to four and then today it went from four all the way back to 480 so today made up the 16 percent sell-off from yesterday let's see this uh from the chat room this is a this is tim uberhorst over in europe uh making the trade on uh, alcoa kind of the same trade he gets He's trading on the, um, uh, I believe this is the three minute, and he gets a uh, OR3 entry south. He's managing his his uh, locking in pieces and parts. He basically got the same exit I did down here after the turning point, uh, and he pulls in 2.7 uh, using his standard framing. Uh, he has his trading view set up that does all the calculations for position sizing and MMRB boxes uh, automated. So he's doing a nice job there. Let's try and take a quick look at the, uh, the daily report. All righty, let's um, come on, mouse. Let's go. There we go. All right, the 150-day um, look back, we're pushing that all-time high around 600. Uh, it feels to me, though, today was the first day of not Trump follow-through syndrome, and um, and it started started rolling over. And so I'm respecting that with uh, uh, by taking a little bit of money off the table today. We're still overbought mostly. The uh, risk Z is favoring the upside breakouts. We're well above the river. Um, and so the, the long side is there, but it's been so extended that I wanted to be careful. Uh, in the Dow tactical, you see we had some good strength in Disney, uh, but weakness in Dow chemicals, Intel, Merck, uh, Pfizer, and plenty of auto framers involved there. So uh, there were not a lot of new breakouts to the upside. And that was one of the things that felt like it was starting to cool off. And I wanted to raise some capital. The ETFs also did not follow through much. Uh, and you had some weakness here in emerging markets, EFA, gold, uh, and uh, materials. So again, this was kind of a tactical pause kind of day after the weekend. We'll see what Tomorrow should be some fireworks. Um, lots of auto framers because today was a relatively narrow range. And there's a lot of symbols that are uh, a distance away from their 10-day high. Uh, some squeezes in JP Morgan, Verizon, and Silver. The usual suspects in here for uh, the auto framer in uh, TC2000. Uh, a lot of summer and spring symbols here responding to the election. Um, uh, that's mostly the U.S. in there. You see the S&P, tech, diamonds, mid caps, small caps. So it's the whole U.S. market is uh, responding. Uh, this, is the, this is the one that gave me a little bit of concern. So when we start looking at the two-day and the 10-day index, you know, when I notice so much weakness on the two-day, but not much strength, and then no new breakouts on the 10-day. Yeah, there's some near the highs, but no breakouts on either side of this. The predominance was weakness today, and so that lack of conviction and follow-through uh, made me raise my level of caution today.
um, the usual suspects in here and the, uh, the intraday trading value. Intel remains an interesting play at four, almost 5% uh, on the range staff percentage and a decently high frog quality number. Marijuana, you can see, has almost tripled its uh, average daily range staff because of these extraordinary moves in the last three days. So that one is on my short list as a tradable. tradable. Uh, you still got Tesla, Devon, Palantir, NVIDIA as the story stocks. Intel's getting smashed pretty hard because uh, of its being booted out of the Dow. So there's been a lot of trading activity in it, and that's why it remains on the list. Hard to see what the future holds for them once they're out of the primary index. Uh, and the last thing to just take a quick look at here is the uh, uh, Z-scores of the regression lines all looking favorable. You know, but the 10 period is right at that Z3, which is a natural place for the short-term uh, reversion back to the mean, which could lead to two or three days of sell-off. And I would expect that to be an orderly sell-off uh, because the there's contentment in both the 30 and the 90, which are both rising and near the upper limit of Z1. So uh, you could have a couple days of quiet selling and, uh, and a little bit of profit preservation without causing a panic. There's a little bit of uh, buffer here between um, the price in the river and the Bollinger Band main. So for those reasons, I'm expecting a uh, kind of a tactical pause the next couple of days. Um, I see some opportunities for some intraday, but uh, I raised cash today in order to take advantage of short-term uh, short bursts for the intraday. All right, that's everything I got for today. We'll get this published and posted. I, mo I put some notes on Patreon about a... Um, uh, opening up a, uh, the coaching opportunity for some folks that want to uh, kind of just audit the course and uh, and start trying to sense where uh, where they might want to be focusing their attention before they commit to coaching. So you can uh, you can see that written up in uh, on on Patreon. But that's everything for today. We'll get this published and posted, and be ready for them tomorrow. Uh, take good care.